You don't pick that life. That life picks you. Welcome to Sit Down News, and before I begin, I'd like to mention our sponsor. Ratchet is a clothing company from the UK started by a young man with a vision, a dream, and determination. They have various prints and styles for men, women, and children. I'll include a link to their website down below in the description for this video. The Godfather is based on the 1969 best-selling novel written by Mario Puzo. Subsequently, Puzo teamed up with film director Francis Ford Coppola and together they created the screenplay for the movie. The Godfather was released in March of 1972. As a matter of fact, this month marks 50 years since the film premiered. The iconic movie became an immediate sensation. More importantly, the storyline became the influence of many young men desiring to model themselves after the characters. In fact, even a book was written about the effect the movie had on American culture. The book is properly titled The Godfather Effect. I am often asked, did guys in the life discuss the movie? To be honest, it wasn't like guys were sitting around talking about The Godfather. What I can say is, there is one question I have heard asked by several guys about a scene in the movie. The question is, why did Vito Corleone take money from Clemenza and Tessio if he knew he was going to kill Don Fanucci? Vito Andolini was born in Sicily. After his father and brother are killed by a local boss, Don Ciccio, Vito's mother takes her son to the Don's house she begs him to spare Vito's life. He refuses, thinking as the boy gets older, he will come for revenge. Vito's mother then holds a knife to the Don's throat and tells her son to run. Don Chicho's men kill her, but Vito escapes. Family members smuggle him onto a boat headed for America. Once on Ellis Island, an immigrant inspector puts the town he came from as his last name, making him now Vito Colleon. Vito Corleone went to live with family members in New York's Lower East Side. The Italians who migrated to New York City occupied Lower Manhattan's tenements. And, just like back in the old country, the Mafia traveled with them. During that time, the first traces of organized crime were set in motion by the Black Hand, named for a black handprint added to their extortion and ransom letters. P. Clemenza originally came from Sicily and also ended up in New York City. The first friendship he developed was with another Sicilian, Salvatore Tessio. In time, Clemenza became acquainted with Vito Corleone. One day, he asked Vito to hold on to some guns for him. To show his gratitude for the favor, he stole a rug for the Corleone household. Both Clemenza and Tessio eventually become partners with Vito in the stolen goods business. Don Fanucci, a member of the Black Hand, approaches Vito Corleone one day by jumping into his moving car. Word on the street was that Vito and his friends were moving stolen goods. Fanucci took insult that they were not paying him tribute. He pointed out that the neighborhood belonged to him and that they needed to show him respect. Knowing that their most recent score netted them each $600, he demanded each of them pay him $200. Surprisingly, Fanucci tells him that if he doesn't pay, the cops would come to his house. A smile appears on Vito Corleone's face. At that moment, he realizes he has to kill Don Fanucci. Instead, he tells him because he shares the money with his friends, he'll have to talk with them. Later that night, the friends get together at Vito's house. Clemenza insisted that they pay Fanucci. But Vito asks, why do we have to pay him? He's one person, we're three. He's got guns, we got guns. Clemenza mentions Fanucci's boss, Maranzella. An interesting fact, Mario Puzo may have based the character on Salvatore Maranzano. 
Maranzano was a cousin usher boss in New York who won a war against a rival boss, Joe Masseria. Masseria was murdered after Lucky Luciano betrayed him by luring him to a meeting. Maranzano himself was killed after word reached Luciano that a hit was placed on him. Nevertheless, Maranzano was shot and stabbed to death in his office. Vito Corleone tells both Clemenza and Tessio to give him only $50 to pay Fenucci, guaranteeing that he will accept that amount. This concerns Tessio, who feels Fenucci will take no less than the 200 per man he requested. But Vito reassures him he'll handle everything and he'll reason with Fenucci. Clemenza seems dumbfounded and he takes it all in but asks, how can you get him to take less? Vito tells him that's his business, but just to remember the favor he is doing for them. A very important line. During a religious feast, Clemenza approaches Vito, hands him his $50, and tells him that Fenucci is in a cafe and his family is out of the house. Next, Tessio comes over with his money. Important to note, both men wished him good luck. Vito goes into the cafe that Fenucci's in. He places the money on the table. Fenucci puts his hat over the money. He complains that the money, which is only $100, is short. He tells Fenucci the money's short because he's been out of work and he needed some time to come up with his end. Fenucci laughs and tells him he has balls. Then he offers him work for good money. A perfect example of what the mob is all about, using other people to do their dirty work. Fenucci is walking through the feast and Vito is up on the roofs of the tenements watching his every move. He knows Fenucci is on his way home and he wants to be there waiting for him when he gets there. As Don Fenucci enters the building, Vito also enters from the roof. He waits in the shadows with a pistol wrapped in a towel. When Fenucci goes to open his door, he turns around and notices Vito approaching. He asks him what he had. I guess he didn't realize it was a pistol. He fires a shot at Fenucci. Then a second one. The towel sets on fire. Then he walks over to Fenucci and fires one last time into his mouth just for good measure. When Vito Corleone questioned why they should pay Fenucci, both Clemenza and Tessio were in favor of paying the money. That equated to him as a weakness in his friends. Also, that they were willing to be shaken down. They both handed over the $50 that day, yet wished him good luck as if they had an idea that he was up to something. Remember, he never handed Fenucci a dollar. In his mind, no one was going to shake him down. He knew he was going to kill him, but he wouldn't even let him think he was shaking him down. If you paid attention... After he kills Fenucci, he takes his wallet. Tessio and Clemenza never ask about their money. After establishing he was not only a leader, but a boss, Vito Corleone organized his family, the Corleone family. As boss of the family, he appointed his friends Clemenza and Tessio to be capo regimes. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you could do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, the Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll put a link in the description.